Hey guys, Dave Bags here, and today I want to welcome you guys to my radio style um, program. I like to call this my bag cast. And typically, when I do my bag cast, I'm usually not on camera, but today I decided to go ahead and do that. And today I am going to be talking about the Nintendo Switch. Now, a lot of you guys out there are going to listen to this podcast, this bag cast, this radio style format show, and you're going to disagree with me wholeheartedly. And some of you guys, some of you guys may actually end up agreeing with me and saying, you know what, maybe Dave Bags does have a point. But before I get into the actual meat and potatoes of this video, I want to talk about buying something. And then I want to draw an ana- I want to draw an analogy between buying something and purchasing the Nintendo Switch. So no matter what we buy, there's an incentive, right? Like for example, you're watching TV and you see a car commercial, right? And the one thing that separates that car and that car commercial from the rest of them is something catches your eye and you say, I got to have it. I got to have this car. There's something about this car. There's something about this computer. There's something about this phone, but I have to go buy this phone. Now, I gotta be honest with you. When they talked about the Nintendo Switch months back and they had the reveal trailer of the Nintendo Switch, I watched it. And there was nothing about that reveal trailer or the commercial or whatever it is that you wanna call it that made me say to myself, I've got to have the Nintendo Switch. I've got to go out and buy the Nintendo Switch. There wasn't one thing about the Nintendo Switch that made me say that. Now, the thing that bothered me about that commercial or that spot, and if you guys haven't seen it, you guys can Google it, but most of you guys probably saw what happened where the guy leaves his house and he goes, I don't know, he goes to the park and... Um, he has his dog and he sits down he takes well before that he takes the nintendo switch off the docking station making it a at-home console to a portable then goes to the park with his dog and i thought to myself wait a second what person in their right mind would literally go walk their dog and then and feel the need to have to take the nintendo switch with them Think about this, guys. It's 2017. I bet 90% of the people in 2017 in civilized countries have cell phones, have a smart device. So having said that, wouldn't you take your phone with you and just walk your dog? No, you feel the need to take the Nintendo Switch off the docking station and walk your dog and play a game in the park while you're waiting for your dog to go to the bathroom. To me, that commercial makes no sense because I don't think anybody in their right mind would do that. They talk about the Nintendo Switch that you can, if you're, if you're, if you're a guy that travels, you can, you can take the Nintendo Switch wherever you go. Okay. That would have been a great idea back in 2007. Remember, the Nintendo DS, PlayStation Vita, those were great. However, in 2017, smart devices, smartphones and tablets and phablets and all these different devices have sort of taken over. Back in 2007, you, it, it was common to see somebody at the airport with a Nintendo DS. Smart devices were just coming out. So now having smart devices wherever you go, phones and everything else, it becomes redundant because now you got to go to the airport, you got to take your smart device out, you got to take your belt off, you got to put your your now Nintendo Switch in the little gray bin, and you got to check in two electronic devices when you get on the plane. There's so many games that you can play on your smart device, whether you go to Google Play or the Apple Store, It'll keep you busy, you know, in a 20-hour flight to Australia. I just don't see why Nintendo decided to go with this whole portable concept in an age, in a time where smart devices have taken over. 
Nobody cares about bringing a Nintendo Switch with them, unless, of course, you're a soccer mom and you want to go out and get a console for your kid because they're not ready to have a smart device. So your little kid, Enorf, he's four years old, star soccer player on the, on the Pee Wee soccer team, and you're going on a trip to Barbados. He doesn't have a smart device. He's too young. So yeah, I can see where the Nintendo Switch would be a good option for that young little lad. To keep him quiet on the plane, give him something to do. But for those of us that have phones and are adults and, you know, we have busy lives and there's things going on, I would be playing a game on my phone. The, the, the Nintendo Switch is a great concept if it had come out in 2007. That's why the Wii was so successful, because it was a different kind of concept, you know, and, and it was new and refreshing. The Switch, it's not new. A portable device is not new. They came out with a portable device. Come out with another portable device and separate it from the console. I, I have no intention on taking an underpowered console, first of all, purchasing an underpowered console, a console that came out three years and three months after Sony's PlayStation 4, and Microsoft's Xbox One, it, it's still not as powerful? Three years and three months? You're already a day late and a dollar short, Nintendo. That's my opinion. A day late and a dollar short. Not only because you have an underpowered, gimmicky console, but you came out with a concept that you already did in 2004, 5, 6, 7, whenever it was that you came out with the Nintendo DS, when it was successful, when it was popular. But today, people have phones. People have smart devices. We can do everything on a smart device for the most part that you can on a Nintendo Switch. So the idea of a portable console that you can take off a dock to me is redundant technology. And Nintendo, in my opinion, in my opinion, in my opinion, I'll say it three times to get it through your heads for those of you that are going to rip me on this video. In my opinion, it's redundant. Now, getting back to going out and wanting to buy something, you know, you, you see that car on TV. As I said, there was nothing about the Nintendo Switch that made me say, I got to go out and buy this. Nothing. Back in 2003, uh, 2013, uh, in June of 2013, when Microsoft and Sony were revealing the PlayStation 4, the Xbox One, there was a lot of incentive for me to say, I have to go out and buy the Xbox One. Not because I think Xbox One is better than PlayStation. It's less powerful. Not because I think it's better than a PC. It's less powerful. But the reason I bought an Xbox One, actually two of them, was because I was part of a generation of gamers that played on the, on, on the Xbox 360. In fact, most of my friends played on the Xbox 360. And we decided that when the Xbox One was released, we were all going to go out and buy one. So that's why that was the reason. See the reason? There's, I'm giving you a reason as to why I bought the Xbox One. Just like some of you guys have a reason that you went out and bought a PlayStation 4. Maybe some of you guys wanted a more powerful console. There you go. Maybe some of you guys wanted a PC because you wanted to have a little bit more control over the specs and the hardware and you just, you know, it's more powerful than an Xbox One and a PlayStation 4. Let's face it, right? Maybe that was the reason for you. But those are valid reasons for everyone to want to go out and purchase whatever they want. Now, I know, different strokes for different folks. I get that. I've said it many times. I've said it many times. But the bottom line is this. I believe that the Xbox One and PlayStation 4 should be far less, far less as powerful than the Nintendo Switch. But it's not. And I don't know, there's a lot of people out there that are going to say, well, power isn't everything. I get it. Believe me. Trust me. I get it. I got an Xbox One. If you want to talk power, the Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and a PC, the Xbox One is at the bottom of the list, right? But again, when Titanfall 1 came out with their reveal trailer in 2013, that stapled my reasoning for wanting to buy an Xbox One. Not only because I wanted to play with my friends who also were getting the Xbox One, but I wanted to play Titanfall 1 at the time. And I'm glad. I, I'm glad I bought the Xbox One. I'm still happy with it. Let me tell you why I think Nintendo not only messed up on the whole idea of the Nintendo Switch, but let me tell you why I struggle to grasp 
the reasoning for buying a Nintendo product these days. If you look at PCs, okay, actually let's take PC out of the equation, okay? Let's just talk strictly console and then we'll talk. You'll see why I don't need to involve PC in this. Xbox One and PlayStation 4 have pretty, pretty good online services with Xbox Live and, um, and uh, uh, oh geez, I just lost it. PlayStation Network. PlayStation Network and Xbox Live, they were great during the 360 and PlayStation 3 years. They both were. Everybody that I've talked to that had a PlayStation 3 or an Xbox 360 said that they can play games with their friends at any given time. And we used to play games like Black Ops 1, Black Ops 2, World at War, Modern Warfare 2, Modern Warfare 3, Grand Theft Auto 4, you know, Halo 4. We played games like that together. It, it, it made us have a good time. We can get into a party and we can play these games together. Now, I'm not talking about exclusives. A lot of you guys are going to say exclusives, exclusives. You know what? I don't care about exclusives, okay? Fine. You got Mario. You got Zelda. But I'm sorry. I can only take so much Paper Mario and Zippity Zelda and, and, and Mario Kart 8 and Mario World 5. It's just... You know, now they have that one game on the on the Nintendo Switch that it's some it's something to do with arms where you, you know, you can fight with your... Look, those games are cute and it's great for little Johnny. He just got done with his soccer game. He just got done eating some oranges. He's tired. You know, and soccer mom Jane with her big boobs decides to set up little Enorf in front of the TV and gets him going in arms and he's playing with his, with his buddy, Gelding. You know, Gelding's a star horseback riding prodigy kid and he's over there in England and and he's got the accent going and he's talking to Gelding and he's like oh this is great oh yeah great that's cute that's nice that's fun that's great but when you're talking about a gamer that wants to move forward the monster drinking gamers the teenagers the the kids in school that are just like yeah man you know when we get out of school today we're gonna go play the PlayStation we're gonna get on PC we're gonna play the Xbox one they're not going to go, let's go home and play Mario Kart. They're not. And as much as a lot of you Nintendo fans um, want to try and, just, you know, you can disagree with me all you want. The bottom line is Nintendo has a long way to go to get on par with, the, uh, the, the, with Microsoft and Sony as far as their online service and their games. Now, I think they got like FIFA and, and I think Nintendo Switch also has like you know, NBA 2K, but you know, is it, is it as good as the PlayStation, PC, and Xbox One? Probably not. The online service certainly isn't going to be as good. Can you play Titanfall? Can you play Rainbow Six? Can you play Halo? Can you play Call of Duty? Can you play uh, Battlefield? Probably not. And most people today play those types of games. Now, I, I don't like Call of Duty. I used to. But, but, but I like Titanfall. I like Titanfall 2. I like Battlefield. I like Rainbow Six. You know, if Nintendo is only going to give me the option to play ARMS and Mario Paper, uh, Mario World, then why would I buy it? Why would I buy a gimmicky console with just a, just a terrible, terrible, terrible controller? You know what? You may have a PlayStation 4, and you may not be a fan of... Uh, Microsoft products, but this is a damn good controller. This is a damn good controller all around, which I'm sure the PlayStation 4 controllers are good as well. It fits perfect in my hand. It, 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 it feels right. Microsoft and Sony got it right. I look at the Nintendo Switch controller and that's just, it's another thing. It's like this gimmicky kind of blocky thing that I, it, it, it just, why Nintendo? Why? Why? And then there's this, there's, this, there's this thing now going, and I'm not really too familiar with it. It could be fixed by now, but the, apparently like there's like these dead pixels that a lot of the users are finding on their screens when they're playing games. And then Nintendo's just saying, oh, you know, if it's not going to affect the gameplay, basically don't worry about it. Are you kidding me? Your hardware is, is, is underperforming to the point and malfunctioning to where people have dead pixels? Come on, man. I know there's problems. You think Microsoft, when they came out with the Xbox One in 2013, was perfect when they were trying to shove the Kinect down our throat, the all-in-one thing? Well, guess what? I'm aware of that. But Phil Spencer fixed it.
PlayStation hit the ground running with their console. They didn't look at it like that. Of course, they, they went far ahead of the Xbox. Congratulations on Sony. They did a damn good job. Now Microsoft is slowly starting to realize that they made a mistake and they're fixing it. This is the difference between recognizing a problem and continually making those problems and recognizing a problem and fixing it. And that's what Microsoft did. There were so many gamers before the Nintendo Switch came out that were begging Nintendo to come out with a console that was just simply normal with a controller that you can sit down and play with your friends in a great online community setting and we don't have that. So there's nothing about the Nintendo Switch, in my opinion, that I find that it, 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 it brings me out to the store or brings me to Amazon where I have to go buy this thing. I just don't see it. If you guys have the Nintendo Switch and you guys are excited to have it, more power to you. I'm, I'm really happy. This video, this bag cast, this podcast, whatever you want to call it, this radio style program of mine is based solely on my opinions, based solely on how I feel based solely on my experience as a gamer playing on the Xbox One, playing on the PlayStation from time to time, and also PC, but primarily the Xbox One because that's what I normally play on, okay? They have nothing against PC, nothing against PlayStation 4, but I do have a problem with Nintendo. I have a huge problem with them coming out with underpowered consoles every generation. They did it in 2010 or whatever it was with the Wii, 2012 with the Wii U, and they're doing it now here with the Nintendo Switch. And I didn't even mention the fact that PlayStation Pro is, is out. And then you're gonna have the Xbox Project Scorpio, which are gonna be even more powerful than the, than, than the Nintendo Switch. What would you buy? What would you rather buy? Again, the console, the Nintendo Switch, in my opinion, is, is geared towards the little kids. The little kids that just got done playing a soccer game. They're tired and mommy just got finished giving them all kinds of fruits. Here, go play the game and shut up. Go play ARMS. Your older brother's playing with his friends, drinking monster drinks, playing PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC. And they're in a huge party right now with all their friends having a good time. As for you, Enorf... Yeah, just sit there. Enjoy your childhood playing the Nintendo Switch. Next year, you're going to be starting kindergarten. And the year after that, you'll be in first grade. Your older brother's going to go off to college and he's going to buy the Xbox uh, Project Scorpio, maybe even the PlayStation 4 Pro, possibly a PC. <laughs> Not you, Johnny. Not you, Gelding. No, no, no. Just, just... Take your Nintendo Switch off the, off the docking station and get on board the plane so we can take you to Disneyland. And we can have that on the plane to keep you quiet because you're a pain in the butt, son. Where was I going with that? Did I have a flashback of my own life? Maybe. Anyway, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys understand why I have the opinions that I have. And I hope you guys throw some comments down below. Tell me what you think about the Nintendo Switch. Tell me what you guys think about what I had to say. If you agree with me, cool, give me a thumbs up. If you disagree with me, if you give me a thumbs down, eh, go ahead. It doesn't matter to me. But give me a reason why you disagree with me. It would be a lot more fun if you guys laid some comments down there and let me know how you felt. My name is Dave Bags. We'll talk to you guys later. Have a good one.